Now then, people. Um, I'm sorry it's been some time. I, I got poorly last week, oh, two weeks ago, but I'm not so bad now at all. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, looking, uh, looking at some of Paul's spare stuff, I've uh, found a few valve holders. This is more for a, a receiver because of it having a, you know, the ability to put a sleeving grounding cap over the top, an earth sleeving, you know, a, a shielding. Anyway, got myself a piece of old laminate floor. This is just pencil marks, you'll have to excuse it. Right? And uh, you might recognise some of this. Uh, this is a tube that me, me George, I was going to say my Uncle George then, uh, my mate George sent me from Ireland. It's an EZ81. Um, this is the transformer that's out of my Decker, and uh, that's because uh, the Decker is absolutely completely in pieces at the moment. I'm still looking for a um, uh, a choke for it that that will fit in, and um, and I found somewhere where I can buy a brand new choke, and I found somewhere where I can buy all the caps for it. Uh, but money's a bit skint at the moment, so I thought, well, while the transformer's out, perhaps we can uh, prototype my homemade valve amp. Now, uh, George sent me uh, some EWC 83s. Uh, thanks again, George. And I've been looking at loads of videos on here on the internet regarding homemade valve amps and stuff, and there's so many of you making them. And uh, I've been amazed. Now, uh, I watched a fella the other night, and uh, he, he said one of the earliest techniques at uh, building amps is uh, building them on a piece of board until you've got it all sorted, you know, uh, uh, just building it on a piece of board. So that's what I've done here. I've just uh, built uh, just a rectifier stage up, uh, very simple. And, um, and basically, uh, this will give me two outputs. Um, and this power supply has been matched uh, for the amplifier I'm going to use it from. Now, I've told you right at the beginning, I'm not clever enough to be able to design <laughs> to design a valve amp. I'm just not. Right, I know my place. But, um, as I've said before, I believe I can copy one. So, uh, if you remember, uh, I've got it somewhere in some of my videos where I'm messing around with an old radiogram. Uh, a single-ended EL84 stereo radiogram. Uh, well, I'm not interested in the radio part of it at all, but I am interested in the EL84s and the EWC83s and the audio output transformers. But we didn't have a power supply for it, if you remember. So we ended up using several different power supplies to get it to work. Do you remember that, folks? For those that don't know what I'm on about, I will show you it in this video. I'll show you another video, another little clip of it, right? So this, this, this power supply is made up specifically to drive that. And then we're going to break down the uh, preamp stages left and right and the power amp stages and build it all on another board like this except we'll probably build preamp on one board I'm not so sure yet and then power amps on another board and then once i get it all working as i'm happy with it then i'd like to build it all on an alloy cabinet you know an alloy box like a lot of them do <clears throat> but for now until i get it all working you know so uh so what I'm um, what I've done here, I've got this meter going to look at AC for us. It's going to look at uh, AC, uh, and it's going to look at the heater supply, right? Uh, which is coming off here, and this will be driving the whole heaters of the amplifier. And these two, um, looking at this meter here that's set to a DC. This is AC, and this is DC. You're looking at a thousand volts. So if it were right up here, it would be a thousand. So uh, it wants to be about 300, and I'm going to give it some titty. This will be looking at the AC going into it, and that's me uh, current bulb, if you like. So I'm going to. No, I'm not going to work it up until I switch it on your carrot. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'm putting some AC in now, and we'll watch as the uh, DC coming up. Obviously, once the valve gets going, it'll take time for that rectifier to get going. There it goes. 
and it's up there 300 volts right where you see the two and then the three there it's just slightly on the three well that's okay for the circuit and uh, the heater supply is running at uh, 6.1 that's okay that's fine and um, you should be able to see uh, if I can turn all these panel bulbs up here sorry about this will you just be able to see me uh, you can hardly see them can you <laughs> but that's me uh, me recce there rolling 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 and that's lovely that folks that really is nice now I'll just show you a, a clip of the uh, the amplifier now that I've got to start breaking down um, bit by bit drawing it all out uh, because you've got to understand it's integrated the pre and power amp is integrated together and the it's integrated into the tuner an AM FM and shortwave tuner well, I don't want any of that tuner in my circuit of course so I've got to get rid of all of that and uh, uh, I've been doing some studying on the tubes by the way um, this tube is capable this is an EZ81 and I was going to use in the circuit an EZ80 but the EZ80 is capable of delivering 90 milliwatts 90 milliamp sorry 90 milliamp of current and um, and the EZ81 is capable of delivering 160 milliamp so I've gone for an EZ81 here right so that uh, it'll and, and the amp will be a single ended uh, known as a single ended that's one EL84, one EC83 working as a mono amplifier driving one single EL84 into its uh, its own matching audio transformer times two so it's the whole thing stereo and and also in the future I'd like to uh, have it having two separate power supplies where at the moment we're just going to be using the Decker PSU but it's still filthy as you can see <laughs> but uh, so I've just uh, had it I've got it sat here on some bolts this is a piece of old laminate floor and I've uh, just got it here sat on some bolts there so that it so that it doesn't all sit on transformer underneath you know yeah uh, but that's lovely that love that's really sexy right so I'll just show you this other uh, tuner now that I've got to break down okay right folks so uh, this is the uh, old radiogram that I'll be scrapping you see I keep walking past it you know and I say to myself surely that's a good candidate I mean we did get to listen to this and hear it you know but I weren't too impressed I've got to be honest I weren't too impressed uh, but um, I still do believe that we can make something out of it and and I've no cabinet for it this is exactly as it come from my uncle Paul so I can't do anything with it at all apart from just keep walking past it so uh, I've moved its aerial, the uh, aerial used to mount on there, this ferrite rod aerial used to mount on top, but as I'm turning it around upside down, I don't want to damage it, you see. Even though I'm scrapping the tuna part, I still don't want to damage it, you know. Um, anyway, basically, uh, these are the two audio transformers I'll be using, and the whole tubes, apart from the EC83s, the uh, EL84s, which would live down there, have been moved. And... Um, and basically now, what, basically what I've got to do is uh, completely get rid of the tuner section, which is all integrated switching, as you can see, you know, so it's not too, uh, too easy, but, and I've no paperwork for it whatsoever. Um, doing loads of studying. <laughs> this is the uh, EC83. Uh, and, and, and that's another thing as well. Uh, you've just seen in that video there, that, that I've only made two power supplies there in one the uh, the uh, six point three volt eater supply and the HT DC and notice I didn't use any smoothing capacitance no smoothing and that's because this fella here has already got the smoothing here uh, we don't have a power supply for this for those that don't know there's no PSU the PSU must have been somewhere in the cabinet and we didn't get that so uh, but um, I have sussed out that these these are uh, double capacitors here uh, going underneath 
and uh, we sussed out where HT wants to go blah 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 so I'll be using these two caps for now I know you can buy them all by the way folks but uh, I believe we can make our amplifier by using all the parts from this all being well until we get it all up and rolling you know um, and also uh, in this in this it wanted high tension then it wanted 6.3 for its heaters for the not for hot tubes at, re at receiver as well as for uh, EL84 but the EWC83s were run on 12.6 uh, 12.6 eaters so uh, and I want to run all the lot you see on 6.3 eaters so um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of studying on the EWC83s and why they, why they had them in there running at 12 volts well I'm still not too sure but we can still run them on um, this is a diagram of the inside of an e ECL83 EWC83 and um, there's two halves to it in reality if you can just look at just one half here, you know, you've got uh, your cathode, then you've got a grid, then you've got your anode, and then you've got your ether supply here underneath, right? And then you've got exactly the same here, uh, just exactly the same. Uh, so notice you've got two separate eaters, and, uh, and on pins four and five, the F is for filament, but pin 4 and 5, notice it's centre tapped, so coming out there on pin 9, um, in other words, if you tie these two together like they are in the Grundig, I think it's a Grundig anyway, you can run them on You can run them on 12.6 heaters, uh, but if you leave him alone and you just connect your heaters to them two, you can run them on 6.3 so that's what we're going to do <laughs> and and exactly the same as you've got here this is like a stereo preamp in a way in one block in one valve uh, but from what I've read on the internet they tell me that they're not exactly the same they're supposed to be the same but there's some differences between them uh, one of them's got a slightly higher stage gain than the other one so uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to uh, we're going to keep it as it is, working one EWC83 driving one EL84, uh, running on 6.3, and uh, so we'll only be using one half of it. Although it does actually use both of them in that, it's a bit more complicated. But this is just same again. Um, you know, you've got your anode and your grid and your cathode, all just same again here at this side with with its own eater. So, uh, and that, that's uh, what I made for my rectifier there. That, that is for the EZ80, although I've used an EZ81. That's a diagram at tube, you know, filament, filament, cathode, and then uh, your two anodes where AC comes into it, you know, and it's pin connections there. Anyway, uh, so that's just a quick update, folks, of what, what I'm doing when I'm, uh, when I'm okay. And I'm okay at this time. I just want to say hello to you all again and and all of that and say goodbye to this I've not, like I say I've not, I feel guilty about it but what am I going to do even if I had a cabinet for it I have no room for a radiogram me folks I have no room for a radiogram <laughs> so you know and uh, you can get some really nice audio out of a single ended amplifier so uh, so that's what I mean these are lovely audio transformers are these bit shame because where they mount up down there they don't have a, uh, these transformers, they don't have a place where I can bolt the transformers. You know, it's unusual how they are, so uh, we're going to have to find some way. And I have to be very careful on where I actually position these transformers outside of the EL84 tubes. You've got to be right careful what you do with magnetism and all sorts, you know. So, uh, anyway, I'll catch you later, folks. Also, these two, you see these two here? These two are them magic eyes, EM, I can't remember what they are now. Uh, EM34s up there. Can't just remember what they are, but I'll be using these two as well. Although I've got some spare, you've seen them before. Uh, well, in there they work as a signal detector, you know. Uh, but we're going to be using them for uh, modulated audio. Uh, EM84, sorry. Uh, but we'll be using them for modulated audio all being well. <laughs> and there happens to be two of them sat in there. Which is marvellous. Right, just a quick video, lads, waving a hand. That's uh, that fruitcake at Bradford. If anyone out there can help me, by the way, or 
got any uh, interesting scrametric drawings to send me of course I'll uh, of course I'll be very interested in them because uh, I'm on my own with this with no paperwork at all for this pile so I'll be uh, having to break it down now and uh, draw out everything and you know uh, measure out components and what have you you know uh, it's going to be a job but hey I watched a fella's video the other day and he said here I am at the start of a homemade valve amplifier. I'm going to give myself one year. And I said to myself, wow, one year. <laughs> and, and then he shows it, he shows it. To, he doesn't actually show him doing it all, but he shows the end version of it. And I'm very impressed. It's very impressive. But I don't have a year, folks. I don't have a year to do this. I want to get my mock-up version going in weeks hopefully weeks maybe a couple of months maybe a, maybe three months perhaps but i don't want to be taking a year over it but every time i get time to do something with it i'll have an hour here and an hour there it'll be like that you know so please don't expect out soon anyway catch you later folks 252 mark in england and i'm gone